Hey, it's Jamie Moore here. You're on the Off the Ball League of Ireland podcast, and I'm very happy to welcome on the phone the Derry City goalkeeper, Mr. Peter Cherry. Peter, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great stuff, Peter. Thanks for having a chat with us. Now, before we speak about uh, the football and also uh, the FND charity, which yourself and your wife Justine have uh, been talking about recently, how was the injury? Because you've missed the last couple of games, haven't picked up an injury against Dundalk recently. Yeah, I had a bit of a hand injury, uh, but it's, it's all going good. Uh, done a lot of rehab with the physio. Um, took a couple of weeks off and have been back training fully this week. So hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back in contention for the weekend. Yeah, I suppose from the point of view of being a goalkeeper, getting a hand injury is not ideal and it means that you can't do anything from a goalkeeping point of view over the last couple of weeks. But the fact that it wasn't the muscle injury around your legs or whatever, I'm sure you've been able to continue in the gym and, and maybe do some actual football stuff So to keep yourself in condition that when your hand recovers, you can hopefully go straight back into the team. Yeah, as you say, it's a nightmare for a hand injury, you know, for being a goalkeeper. But uh, luckily it wasn't a leg injury, so I've been able to keep the fitness up and do bits and pieces of football. Um, I've not missed any days, you know, training-wise, apart from the goalkeeping side of it. Um, I, I did try the goalkeeping side of it, but it just it, it was too sore. You know, I couldn't do it. So, but regards fitness and stuff, it's all good. You know, I haven't stopped in that that respect. But back training this week and all, all seems to be going well. And in terms of the injury, Peter, what actually happened? Um, <laughs> we we'll probably not believe it, but we played against Bohemians um, a few weeks back, and I think it was the ninety third or fourth minute. I came out to punch the ball, punched one of our guys, Ali Gilchrist, in the back of the head. Wow. And fractured a bone in my hand, my right hand. And then the fall, I decided I could play on, you know, and play the following week against the dog. And then obviously came out to do the same thing. I tried to punch my left hand, punched Pat Hogan in the head <laughs> and fractured a bone in the left hand. So uh, you couldn't really make it up. So in the space of two weeks, Peter Cherry, you managed to fracture a bone in both hands, one punching a teammate accidentally, and then two punching the League of Ireland top scorer from last season accidentally. Yes, you wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> you absolutely would not. And it's something we see all the time with goalkeepers. They come out and they punch and they're told by their goalkeeping coach and their manager, take ball, take man, take everything. But in your case, you, uh, you had hoped to avoid injuries like that. But unfortunately, they, uh, that's just so random two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row, I couldn't believe it. Um, I thought actually I could have played on in the dog game, but the fighter was, he was at me and he was pressing in my hand and it was just too sore, you know, so I had to come off. So which hand was the one that caused you to be unable to play for the last few weeks? Was it the left one against Dundalk or the right one against Bowles? Uh, it was the right, uh, sorry, the left one. Okay, nice. But uh, that's thankfully on the way to recovery and you're hoping to be available for selection against UCD this Friday game. I'm going to be at in the UCD Bowl. Yeah, well, as I say, I've been training this week and all seems to be going to plan, so I, I put myself in contention for the weekend. Great stuff. And Peter, just overall, I know you've not played in the last couple of games, but how have you found life in Derry off the pitch, on the pitch as well? And, of course, the reason you went there was to be a number one, have not played too much at Cork last season, and you started the season at least in the team, and I'm sure once you're back, you'll, you'll hopefully go back in. Yeah, well, I love it up here. You know, it's great. Getting into training every day is great. You know, the... In the management, and you know, uh, Declan Devine, Kevin Deary, uh, Paddy McCourt, you know, it's just it's a, it's a great place to be. You know, um, yeah, it's just it's regular football. You know, I wasn't getting it at Cork, um, and I, I just had to, I had to go for a change, you know, and, and get back playing again, get a fair crack at it. And uh, when Declan rang me, to be honest, when Declan rang me, what got me to meet him was. He didn't ask me about football or how I was or anything. He asked me how my wife was. That was his first words. How's your wife? And I thought, well, you know what? If you take take the time out to find out about my wife, then I want to come and meet you. You know, because he didn't want to speak to me about football. And my wife was, which was great to hear. So I went and, went and met him and he was an absolute gentleman and he just sold the club to me. Yeah, and Peter, I was going to ask you at the end of the interview about your wife Justine and the FND charity that yourself and I know with the help of the club launched last week, but you've brought it up, so I'll ask you now. Just give us the background to your wife Justine and this FND condition we're seeing. I know you're on the phone, Peter, but just an image of yourself and Justine on the, the Derry City YouTube uh, talking all things FND action. 
Yeah, well, what happened was she was actually working and she just didn't feel right. She, she worked with special needs kids and she just she didn't feel right. Um, next minute she collapsed at work and they got her an ambulance, rushed to the hospital. They thought they took a stroke and they found out it wasn't a stroke. Then they told us it could be a mixture of Parkinson's or MS. And, but then it was none of those. And we were left going, well, what is it then? Because if you can tell us it is one of them, then we can deal with that. But you're telling us this thing has the symptoms of these, but it's not them. You know, then it, we found out it's a brain disorder, a functional neurological disorder. It just basically means that a part of our brain that isn't sending the correct signals to our limbs. You know, she could, she could wake up in the morning and not be able to move or not be able to speak. You know, or... She could, we could be walking down the street and she could just come to a dead stop. Everything will stop working. Um, she now, she takes seizures. You know, so we have to manage that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just, it's been life-changing for myself and my wife, you know, because we only got married, married there 15 months ago. And then a couple of months later, she, this happened to her. Um, and as you said, about Derry City, they've been on board fully. They've been absolutely great. The lads and the team have been absolutely great. My wife, the, the supporters all the way, and they, they made the video, and you know, and it was great to see. It was great to see a club take um, getting right behind us. So yeah, it was it was good. Yeah, and I'm sure that has to be so hard, Peter. You know, you're you have your wedding, you have your honeymoon, and then a couple of months later, your wife is feeling unwell and, and, and I'm sure she goes to the doctor at the hospital thinking that it might be a flu or it might be a bug or, or it might be something and then there's a period of time where you're waiting to find out exactly what it is and you're told what this FND is and then you see the daily impacts or you know every time that it does impact her how it impacts her in, in all the different ways like that must have been very tough for, for you and, and you know obviously for her too but you know being her husband and, and you know having just come through an amazing period of your life getting married and all that sort of stuff to, to have to go and, and, and get that diagnosis then Yeah it's, it's difficult to deal with but it's just now we have to be more careful in things that we do and like I can't really take out we can't go to concerts or anything like that now because of all the noise and the lights and you know it's, it's just simple things that people take, probably take for granted now that we can't really do you know, um, only recently she's found herself, if we're going to a busy restaurant and the, the noise is too much and it, she, she, it affects her really bad. So now we have to leave, you know, and go and find a quieter place. Yeah, so, so yeah, go on, sorry, Peter, go on. Oh, no, it's, it's just it's very difficult. We just have to plan more stuff, you know, like if, if I'm going to football um, on match nights, I want to make sure she has a rest, you know, for a couple of hours during the day. But then it's a peace of mind for myself that, that night I know she's going to be fine she's going to be okay she, she, she's plenty of energy you know nothing's going to happen so then I can only focus on the football side of it and yeah, she, she can uh, she knows that herself she, she seems to say to me she'll be okay you know to go to the games and blah 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 but it's only she does it for my peace of mind now she'll take a wee rest you know just for my peace of mind so I can get through the game knowing she'll be okay so yeah, you just have to plan. We have to plan a lot more, more carefully now. You know to what we can do and where we can go. Yeah, and I suppose Peter as well. Like from your point of view as a footballer and as someone who's thirty-five now and you know has played a, at a very good level of football for the last X number of years, you've never had to head off on a Friday night or a Saturday night or whatever to a match with that concern about your wife and, and before that your girlfriend in your mind, which I'm sure can't be easy either when come 7.45 on a Friday, you want to try and be 100% fully focused on the football match? No, to be honest, I, I mean, I suppose I'm lucky in the way, Justine, she, she's always said to me, football comes first. She's always said that from day one. And when this happened to her, I, I had other options. And I said to her, listen, you come first. You have to come first at this point because this is too important. And she says, no, Peter, nothing changes. I'm going to fight this. I'm going to deal with it. Football comes first. Go and do, your, do what you do. And for her to say that to me was unbelievable. I couldn't ask for any more. I wasn't expecting it. You know, because she's been hit with this, this diagnosis of FND and she's still telling me, no, you go and do your thing. Go play football. I'll be fine. I'm going to fight this. It just, it's just motivation for me. You know, if I'm thinking, well, she's... You struck down with this. She's taking it in the chin. She's fighting it every day. 
then I can go and play my football. I know she's going to be fine. You know, I know she's she's going to fight all the way. And so it, it doesn't affect me. You know, it doesn't it doesn't even come into play at, on a Friday night because I know she's going to be okay. You know, so it's going to football is a release for me because I know everything's fine. I know she's fine, and, and the people at Derry have absolutely took to her a hundred percent and. All the medical staff at the games and the stewards and everything all look after her and help her with whatever she needs, bring her cups of tea and you know, they just, just took her to her heart. It's it's absolutely great. Yeah, and fantastic that she's still able to go to, to watch you guys playing as well in, in what has been a really good start to the season at a very new look, Derry City as well, Peter. Just Lastly, on your wife, Justine, and on the FND, if people want to find out more about her story or about you know, how they can help or, or exactly what, and I know people can go to YouTube and, and search up Derry City FC and you'll see it's one of the most recent videos that the club have posted with all of the players you know, and yourself and Justine speaking about it as well. And also, yeah. Peter, uh, quite a funny video, and I, I know the word funny is not very applicable here, but of uh, all your teammates who won't be becoming TV presenters anytime soon because they couldn't actually read a five second piece off a of paper without really messing it up. Uh, listen, don't give any of them TV jobs, that you're right. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't even a five second piece. They'd literally read a couple of words off a little card <laughs> and they couldn't even keep a straight face for two seconds. Um, no, but listen, it was, it was funny, it was, it was great. I mean, my wife was there, she was sitting watching all the boys doing it and it was. It was absolutely hilarious, <laughs> to be honest. But Someone I mean, couldn't even say their own in, names. You know, they got the video done, but it, it was a great laugh, and it was great support for Justine, and it was great for her to be there and see it all, you know, and, and the management got involved as well. Um, and to be honest, I think the management were worse than the players, but I don't think they showed as many, many clips today in the, the YouTube video. Yeah, I think um, I think one of your teammates, Owen Stokes, actually said, "I'm Owen Stokes from Derry FC City, as opposed to Derry City FC." So they were that flustered by being on camera, they couldn't even say their own name in the football club. Never mind what was on the the cards in front of them. Well, listen, that's what I'm dealing with. <laughs> you know, that's, that's that's why we're footballers. We don't have brains. You know, we're, we're not going to be TV presenters or anything like that. <laughs> but no, that's absolutely great. I mean, I think you see Paddy McLean. I don't. You, I think he got one word out before he started laughing. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so, sure if people want to watch those videos, it's on the uh, YouTube page of Derry City Football Club, Peter. But just yeah. on, on a serious note, where can people go to find out some more information on FND, on, on Justine's story? Well, to be honest, there's not a, that's the thing with this FND, there's not a whole pile out there on okay. it. Um, so there's, there's a, an, it's actually World FND Week as of now, from the 7th to the 13th of the month. Um, it's a worldwide thing. Um, there was a, a thing on in Belfast la- uh, last week or two weeks ago. Sorry, my wife was at. Um, but as I say, it's not a whole. You can't really find out a great deal about it because nobody seems to know that much on it. Um, you know, the doctors and things like that are. They don't really know what it is because I mean they're telling us it's it could be Parkinson's, it could be AMS, it could be this, it could be that. But it's none of them. So you're left going well. I still don't know what that is. You know, how do I deal with what I don't know what that is? But, um, no, see, you just, it's only Google. That, that's all you can do is Google it, FND, and what comes up is basically what we, my wife are left to read. You know, and all the people out there with FND, that's what they're left to read. You know, and, and how to deal with what happens because it's it's not just seizures and um, paralyzing your body. It, this uh, comes with I mean it, it comes with a whole host of things you know you can have bowel problems any, any amount of stuff comes with a functional neurological disorder so it's not just one thing you know so it's that's what I'm saying it's not a whole pile out there to you, know, you can't get that information I mean I'd love to be able to say oh you can go to this site and you get the information but I've yet to find it yeah, well, even now, I mean, I'm having a look. I've got a laptop in front of me, and I've just typed in FND into Google. And normally, if you type in any sort of a, you know, a medical condition, hundreds yeah. of links come up with different things and different doctors and different videos. And there's just not too much here at all, Peter. So it's yeah. something I'm sure that you guys are, are having to learn and deal with kind of on a daily basis. Is there hope from doctors and from medical professionals that, you know, you know that in, in, in the case of Justine, that they can find a medication and, and find a, a help for her? And, you know, is, is it possible that eventually she might be able to get better or is this something that will she'll, she'll have to live over the rest of her life? Well, what we're getting from doctors is, is that she's going to have this for the rest of her life. 
that I, okay. I think that's what we're getting from it. Um, but she was in hospital over here, and they were telling her, "Oh, you, you could, um, you'll be booking in no time. You'll be able to run marathons and what have you." And, and, and we were listening to it, thinking, "Okay, that, that's great news. That's fantastic." But then nothing was happening. Nothing was happening, and then all of a sudden it backtracked to, mm, "Well, now you might have this for life, basically." <laughs> So we went from one extreme to the next. Um, so they're not saying there's massive cure out there or anything like that. It's a lot of physio, a lot, a lot of psychology, and, and it's just <laughs> I don't even know how to put it because there's not that much out there. You know, it's just you've got to deal with it on your own. Basically, I mean, we take all the the, the medical professionals, we take all their information on board, and. We'll say, well, if, if that works for us, excellent. If it works for us, but we'll take it on board. But at the same time, we're going to go ahead and do our own thing anyway. It's we think's making Justine better. You know, if we'll do our own rehab. You know, to try and get her better, um, because at the end of the day, we're not getting much information out there from anybody else. Yeah, and like I was going to ask you more about the football, Peter, but I'm actually not going to now because this story just shows that life is about more than football, and it's something that you know we all love the League of Ireland so much, and all the fans and the players and the managers, you know, really do depend on a win on a Friday night for their mood and, and you know all that sort of stuff as well. But when yeah. you hear stories like this, and I'm sure for you, no more than anybody else, it, it really hits home that you know football is great, but it's football, it's not life, and it's that there's so many more things in the world that are going on that are so much more important? Yeah, 100%. There's always somebody out there, you know, that's worse off than ourselves. And, uh, but it, it, as you say, it's, it's not the be-all and end-all football. But, I mean, if you ask Justine, it is the be-all and end-all. You know, because she loves her football, she won't miss a game, she'll always go to a game. So, so, but, I mean, it's great. You know, she's still getting out to go to the game. She's lucky in that respect. She's still able to do it. Nice. You know, so it's it's great for her. Yeah, but hopefully I'll bump into her maybe at the UCD Bowl on Friday with her husband Peter back in goal for Derry and uh, keeping clean sheets hopefully in a, in a win. And, and what's really been a good season, a great start for Derry, which hopefully they will continue in the coming weeks. Peter, thanks a million. Hopefully the, the hand gets better. Best of luck to yourself and to Justine as well. And we'll speak to you again. Thanks for coming on. Thanks a million, guys. Thank you.